Hello everyone, welcome back to Atreyu Crochet. So in today's video, I am very excited because it is time to start up again our actual fourth season of my scarf tutorials. I know you guys on this channel love my scarf tutorials and yeah, usually I'm just waiting <laughs> to get back to this time of the season so that I can start them up. I think we're gonna be picking up where we left off at like take 43 maybe? Yeah, let's get going with this scarf tutorial for season four. Things you will need include skein or ball or cake of yarn. If I can find this, I will leave a link to this in the description, okay? This is Mandela Ombre. One of you guys asked if I would do an ombre yarn or work with an ombre yarn, so here you go. <laughs> uh, this yarn calls for a size I, I think that's 5.5 US, 5.5 millimeter US, yes, because my J is 6 millimeters, so 5.5. I'm gonna, you're gonna need, and I'm gonna need as well, <laughs> a darning weaving tapestry needle and then a pair of scissors. Let's get to this. So we're going to be starting out with the slip knot, so we'll take our yarn, wrap it around our finger that way, twist exchange, and we're going to wrap it around our finger that way. We're going to pull this one over that one and off our finger, and while we're doing that, we're going to lift up on the one on the finger, okay? Now we're going to grab our crochet hook, insert it into the loop, and then pull to tighten. So. We are going to crochet a multiple of four, a multiple four plus two. So I'm going to crochet 14. So multiple of four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's already <laughs> two multiples. So I'm going to keep going. Nine, 10, 11, 12. Okay. And that's not quite wide enough. That's three multiples of four. So I'm going to go one more. 13, 14, 15, 16. All right, so that's my multiple four, four times four, 16, and then plus two, so the multiple of four, which is this, and then we're gonna add two, one, two. So I have a total of 18 chains. Now I'm going to place one single crochet into the second chain from the hook. This is the hook, that's the first chain from the hook, this is the second chain from the hook, and that's where I'm going to go in and make a single crochet. So skip the first one, go into the second one like that. I'll now yarn over, pull through to the front, and now I have two loops on my crochet hook. One, two. I'll yarn over, and then I'm going to go through both loops. Go through one, go through two. And now I'm just going to repeat that. I'm going to continue putting one single crochet in every chain across. So that's where I put my single crochet there. So the next chain is there. And I'm going to go in there and do the exact same thing. I will enter the chain, yarn over, pull through to the front. For two loops, yarn over, go through two. One, two. Okay. You'll notice I'm not yarning over before I go into the chain. It's because this is a single crochet. So I just enter the chain, then I yarn over, pull through to the front for two loops, yarn over, go through two, one, two. Continue putting one single crochet in each chain and I'll meet you at the very final one. I'm now at that final chain. I'm going to enter it and put my single crochet. Okay. Now I'm going to chain one. Okay, so I just completed row one. Now I'm about to start row two. Before I turn my work, I want to show you this final stitch right there, where this chain one is coming out of, that's the first place that I'm going to enter for the next row for row two, okay? Just wanna show you that right here. All right, so I'll turn my work, and into this first stitch that I just identified with, this, with the uh, darning weave and tapestry needle, that's where I'm going to put a single crochet, okay? So I am slicing the icing off the top of the cake. I'm gonna yarn over, pull through to the front for two loops and make a single crochet. One, two. Alrighty, so now I am going to skip a stitch. So let me give you the aerial view. This is the next stitch. I'm skipping that stitch and into the stitch thereafter. That's where I'm gonna put my first V-stitch, okay? 
So I skip the next stitch, and in this one, that's where I'm going to put my first V stitch. What is a V stitch? Well, in this pattern, a V stitch is made up of a double crochet, a chain one, and then another double crochet. All right, so I'm going to yarn over because I said I have to make a double crochet. Don't forget to skip the next stitch and in the one thereafter, slice the icing off the top of the cake and make a double crochet. So I'll yarn over, pull through to the front. You'll notice this time you're going to have three loops. One, two, three. So we're going to yarn over, go through two. One, two. And then we're going to yarn over again and go through the remaining two. One, two. All right, now we're going to chain one, okay? And we're going to go right back in there right back into the same stitch where we first put that double crochet. So we'll yarn over because we're making another double crochet. Go back in there. Okay. Slicing the icing off the top of that same cake. Yarn over, pull through to the front for three loops. Yarn over, go through two. One, two. Yarn over, go through two. One, two. And you'll see you have just created a V stitch. When you put that chain one in between, it causes the first double crochet to go that way and the second one to kind of go that way and it creates a V. So that's why we call it the V stitch. Now you guys, we're going to skip the next stitch. So this is the next stitch right there. We're skipping that one. And we're going to go into the one there after, which is that one. And we're going to put a single crochet. So skip one and go into two. Slicing the icing off the top of the cake of stitch two, and then making a single crochet. Okay, like that. And now we're going to do the same thing, but we're going back to the V stitch now. So, the V stitch begins with a double crochet, so we'll yarn over to prepare, skip one, go into the one thereafter, and make our double crochet. So that's just the beginning of the V stitch. Now we got to finish the V stitch, so we chain one. And then we go back in there and make another double crochet back into that same stitch. Okay, so you're just going to continue in that pattern. At the beginning started with a single crochet, then I did V stitch, then I went to single crochet, then I did V stitch, and I was skipping stitches in between. Let's go a little bit further. So I just made a V stitch, so the next one is a single crochet. But I skip one, and then I go into two and put the single crochet. All right, now I just made a single crochet, so it's time for the V-stitch. So V-stitch entails making a double crochet, so I yarn over to prepare, but don't forget to skip one and then put the double crochet into two, chain one, and then go back in there, put the second double crochet into two to complete the V-stitch. And this is what it should be looking like, okay? I'm going to continue this and I'll meet you at the end of this row, row two. So now we're going to end this row with a single crochet because we just completed the V-stitch. When we skip the next stitch and go into the final stitch, that's going to be a single crochet. So we end the row, slicing the icing off the top of the stitch. We end it with a single crochet. Okay. So those are rows one and two. Rows three and four will be the rows that we're going to repeat for the duration of the pattern. So pay close attention to what I'm about to do next. So I'm going to chain one. And in this very first stitch, as before, where that chain one is coming out of, that's where I'm going to put my first stitch that I make. So turn my work now. And as I said, in that same first stitch, I'm going to put a double crochet. So yarn over. Go into that very first stitch, the same stitch where that chain one is coming out of, slice the icing off the top of the cake, and make your double crochet. I'm going to move a little bit faster now that you guys know how to make the double crochet and the single crochet. All right, so for row three, after this double crochet, I'm going to chain one, then I'm going to find the V-stitch, which is there, okay? And in that chain one space, that's where I'm going to put a single crochet. So here's the double crochet. I go to the chain one space and I make a single crochet like that. Okay. After that, I'm going to chain one. Okay. And then I'm going to see the single crochet right there. Okay. So you'll see here was the V stitch. I put a single crochet in there. I chain one. And now in the pattern comes a single crochet. In that single crochet, we're just going to put a double crochet. Okay. So yarn over, find a single crochet there, slice the ice knot top of the cake, and make your double crochet. And then we're just going to repeat that. 
Row three is the row where you chain one in between your single crochets and your double crochets. Okay, so I just made a double crochet. I chain one, find the V-stitch in that chain one space, and I put a single crochet. So you see I'm alternating between the double crochet and the single crochet. All right, now I chain one. Now I find the next stitch. This, I just went into a V-stitch, so I know the next one is a single crochet, which is there. And I just made a single crochet, so I'm going to make a double crochet. Double crochet goes into the single crochet. Chain one. Here's the V-stitch, which is comprised of double crochet, so I put a single crochet in that chain one space. Chain one. Single crochet here, so I put a double crochet. Chain one. In that chain one space of the V-stitch, I put a single crochet. Chain one. And then I'm going to end with a double crochet in that final single crochet. So slice the ice knot top of the cake like that and make your double crochet. And that is row three. You're going to do that every single time for row three. Remember, row three is the one where you're going to chain one in between your double crochets and your single crochets. You're going to see in just a moment that row four is not like that. So for row four, we're going to start out with a chain one again just like we did in row three but this time instead of putting a double crochet in that first chain in that same first chain we're going to put a single crochet and one way that you know you're going to do that is because we ended with a double crochet so you always want to put the other type of stitch in there so since we ended with a double crochet in row three that first stitch is going to get a single crochet although the beginning of both rows three and four begin with that chain one okay so let's turn our work Slice the icing off the top of the cake of the first stitch and put a single crochet. One, two. All right, so that's our single crochet. Now, remember I told you that row four does not chain in between. There are no chain ones in between. So we chained one at the beginning and then we put the single crochet in the first stitch. And now we're going to put a V stitch into the next single crochet. So here's the single crochet right there. And that's where we're going to put a V-stitch, which is made up of a double crochet, All right? Chain one, and then go back in there for another double crochet. And then that creates the V, okay? Because we're on row four and we don't chain one, we're just going to go immediately to the single crochet. So all the double crochets are going to get single crochets, all the double crochets of row three will get single crochets, and all the single crochets of row three are going to get the V-stitch. So here's the next stitch. It's a double crochet, so we put a single crochet in it. Here's the next stitch. It's a single crochet, so it's going to get a V-stitch, which is the double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Remember, you do not chain one in between these. The only time you chain one for row four is when you're making the V-stitch. The next stitch is a double crochet, so we put a single crochet. The next stitch is a single crochet, so we put the V stitch, which is made up of double crochets. Chain one back in there for another double crochet. Okay? You guys getting the hang of this? The next stitch is a double crochet, so we put a single crochet in it, slicing the icing off the top of the cake. The next stitch is a single crochet, so we put the V stitch which is made up of double crochets. So you guys can see I'm putting the other stitch into the stitches of row three. And then this final stitch is maybe a little bit hard to identify, but that's that chain one and that double crochet. So we're gonna slice the icing off the top of the cake, off the top of the stitch right there, and we're gonna put a single crochet. There are two ways that I know I'm going to put a single crochet in this. One, we just made the V-stitch, which is made up of double crochets, so we know we go to the other stitch, which is just the single crochet. Another way to look at it is this. That's that chain one and the double crochet, and we always crochet the other stitch into the stitch below. So since there's a double crochet there that we're, ch that we're crocheting into, that means we put the other stitch, which is the single crochet there. Okay. All right, and that's row four. So now we just repeat rows three and row four. Remember, both rows begin with the chain one. 
But row three begins with the double crochet. One way you know that is because we end it with a single crochet. So we have to put the other stitch. Or you can just have it memorized. So you put the double crochet. And remember row three chains one in between the stitches. And now we just alternate between double crochet, single crochet. So now we find the V stitch, put a single crochet, chain one, find the single crochet, put a double crochet, so on and so forth. I'm going to leave some uh, time stamps for rows three and row four, just in case you need to go back and see them again until you get it memorized. After you do it a little bit, you will figure it out. I've tried to give you some uh, ways to remember what you should be doing at what point, but I can understand, especially for you beginners, um, it may take a little bit longer for you to commit it to memory, but it's essentially the scarf is a two row repeat and um, it's very easy. So let me finish this row on camera. All right, so that's the double crochet. I'm row three, so I chain one, I find the V stitch, the chain one space, single crochet, chain one, find the single crochet, put the other stitches as a double crochet in that. Just slicing the icing off the top of the cake. Chain one. Find the chain one space of the V stitch, single crochet. Chain one. Find the single crochet, put a double crochet. Chain one. Find the V stitch, chain one space, and put a single crochet. Chain one. And here on the end is the single crochet, so I put a double crochet in it, slicing the icing off the top of the cake. Like that. Okay. Already I know the first stitch of row of the next row which is going to be a row four repeat, is going to be a single crochet. Why? Because I ended with a double crochet. And remember I told you before, rows three and four start with the chain one, okay? I turn my work and I'm going to go right into that very first stitch where that chain one is coming out of and put a single crochet. Remember, row four does not have the chain ones, okay? The only time you chain one is when you're making the V-stitch, which is what I'm about to make. So here I have a single crochet, so I'm going to put a double crochet or the stitch that includes the double crochet in there, which is the V-stitch. So I yarn over, go in there, make my V-stitch, chain one because I'm making the V-stitch, go back in there and put the double crochet. But because this is row four, I don't chain one in between. I go to the next stitch, which is double crochet, and I put the other stitch, single crochet. I don't chain one because this is row four. Now I go into the single crochet and put the V-stitch because the V-stitch contains the other stitches, the double crochet. You guys see how easy this is? And we're just going to continue on like that. I think you guys are going to get this, okay? All right, so I'm going to get some length, and then I'll check back in, and we will wrap up this video. I think you guys are going to love this scarf. All right, so I'm going to go through just two more rules on camera, just for those of you who still need to see it. I'm going to go faster, okay? So I ended with a single crochet, so I'm going to start with the chain one as always, but because I ended with a single crochet, I'm going to make a double crochet in that first stitch. Whenever I start with double crochet, that's the that means that's the row where I chain one in between. Now I find the V-stitch, single crochet, chain one. Find the single crochet, double crochet, chain one. Single crochet, chain one. Double crochet, chain one. Single crochet, chain one. See how fast this goes? Double crochet, chain one, single crochet, chain one, and in this final single crochet on the end, double crochet. Okay, now we'll turn our work. We'll chain one. I ended with the double crochet in the previous row, so that tells you to start with the single crochet. And remember, when you start with the single crochet, you do not chain one in between. So now we do a V-stitch. back in there and then single crochet and then V stitch and then single crochet and then V stitch and then single crochet and then final V stitch And then final stitch, single crochet. Okay. We're gonna chain one and I wanna start, I wanna end this the way I started. I started with the row single crochet. 
So I want to end this that same way. So turn my work. Okay. And then in every stitch across, so in this very first stitch, I'm going to put a single crochet. And then in the, here's the V stitch. It's made up of double crochet, chain one, double crochet. So in each of those, I'm going to put a single crochet. So single crochet and the double crochet in this chain one space, I'll put a single crochet. So just go in the gap like that, come out on the other side and make your single crochet and then put a single crochet in the next double crochet. Next we get to the single crochet, that gets a single crochet. Now we get to the double crochet. So All of these are going to get a single crochet. So I'm just going to call out what we're crocheting into. Double crochet, single crochet, double crochet, chain one space, double crochet, single crochet, double crochet, just slicing the icing off the top of the cake, put in that single crochet, chain one space, double crochet, and then single crochet on the end. Chain one, cut your yarn, and fasten off, okay? And now we've ended basically the way we started, which is like this, okay? All right, so now you'll just grab your darning weaving tapestry needle, you'll yarn the needle. So feed the yarn into the eye of the needle, and then weave in one direction through some stitches, through those single crochets that you just made, in one direction like that. Okay, and then once you get it all the way through, go back taking a slightly different path in the other direction. And this will secure your yarn and your work, and you don't have to worry about it coming undone like that. Okay. All right. Reshape it back to its original form, and then cut your yarn down. Weave in this tail at the beginning, same way. And then, yeah, I will check back in. By the way, I didn't tell you guys at the beginning, you probably saw it in the title, but this is the blossom stitch. Okay. By the way, <laughs> if you got this far in the video, uh, let's see, figure out a creative way to include the word petunia in your comments that you leave for me. <laughs> and I, this should go without saying, but please don't make it obvious, people. <laughs> when I've like put in like secret words that I tell you guys to tell me in the comment section. <laughs> I literally will sometimes get people say, yeah, I watched to the end of the video and I saw that you said, say the word Petunia, so I'm saying Petunia. And it's just like, really? <laughs> Did you really just like say all of that? Like, you're, <laughs> you're supposed to be discreet. It's supposed to, you know, like if you watch the entire video or you got this for the video, it's a good thing you've set yourself apart from the rest of the people, so... <laughs> <laughs> when you leave comments like that, you're essentially telling everyone else, leveling the playing field. And even if they didn't watch the entire video, they can read your comment and just type it to you, you know? So, <laughs> please, please, if you get this far and you know that I want you to say Petunia some way, um, then yes, please be discreet or it doesn't really serve its purpose. <laughs> I just had to say that because it just cracks me up. I'm like... I thought it would be more obvious, but I guess not. I think some people are just so excited <laughs> that, you know, they discovered a hidden thing that they just go crazy in comments. But, uh, yeah. All right, let me <laughs> give you the full view of this. I'm sorry, I'm silly. All right, you guys, I don't know if you can tell, but this is an absolutely stunning scarf. This blossom stitch is just amazing. This yarn <laughs> is amazing. This, uh... Mandela Ombre yarn. Ah, incredible. Like I said, if I find a link, I will leave it in the description. This yarn is kind of stretchy. It's just, ah, I'm, I really am a fan of this yarn. And I like the, all the different colors that um, are found in the colorway. Um, just very, like, subtle colors. Um, I, by the way, I have this much left. So you will very easily be able to complete your scarf with one cake if you're curious to know how wide I made mine 
Mine is about mm, four inches, which is about a little bit more than 10 centimeters. You, of course, can make yours wider. This is a super long scarf. You can see like how all of this that you're seeing on camera is double this length. So this is a super long, long scarf. Um, but yeah, this is going to be it for this tutorial. Thank you so much for joining me in this fourth season of these scarf tutorials. I love these scarves. I love coming up with these patterns and I think you guys love them as well. So yeah, scarf season. I'm going to try to sprinkle in some other types of videos during this fall and winter seasons, during these fall and winter seasons, but um, definitely over the next several weeks, they're going to be filled with scarf tutorials because tis the season. Alright guys, that's going to be it for this video, but you know I'll see you on the next one. In the meantime, happy crocheting!